thank you so much, and good morning to everyone. Thank you for inviting me here to this important day. We have important things to, to, to talk about, people. Um, a couple of months ago, I found myself uh, sitting in a postmaster's office in a small town called uh, Firozpur in Punjab, in India. And the postmaster had graciously offered to demonstrate the biometric system uh, that India uses to allow one of its 1.4 billion in inhabitants to withdraw uh, social benefits, pensions, food stamps. It was really nice to see how people could withdraw much needed benefits simply by using their fingerprints also on behalf of elderly uh, or sick members of their family. No need for internet, credit cards or passports uh, that can sometimes be an issue for people with limited means. Uh, why am I mentioning this? Because the government also tried to link this biometric system to India's voting system. In the world's biggest democracy, this has raised a lot of debate and discussion, a legal process, and a lot of questions about rights. Questions that I'm really pleased to see that NORAD's, uh, NORAD's conference has set out to address in full. 2024 is the election year, not only in India, but in the US, South Africa, Indonesia, they will all head to the polls. Almost half of the world's population will, in theory, have a chance to partake in the most fundamental democratic exercise. Yet, I'm sure all of us can agree that simply holding elections does not constitute a democracy. We know that the authoritarian leadership may be justified while hiding behind the ballot box. Democratic setbacks are unfortunately happening globally. We see evidence of dwindling trust in political leadership, systems and institutions. In too many countries, people are experiencing declines in freedom of expression and freedom of assembly and association, fundamental conditions for democracy. And the environment for free and objective journalism is also becoming more and more dangerous for those who try to bring unbiased, important information to the public's attention. Add this, um, add to that, that the response to democratic aspirations too often has been violence and a crackdown on civil society. Recent examples are in Belarus, Iran, Sudan, Nicaragua. The last few years, we have also witnessed a deeply worrying pushback against gender equality, both in multilateral fora and in many countries across the world. We see articulated opposition to sexual and reprodu uh, reproductive health and rights, and threats to previous gender equality policy gains. Women's rights are particularly vulnerable in fragile and young democracies. Two months ago, we celebrated the courage of Nargis Muhammadi here in Oslo. But conservative forces are systematically undermining women's rights through changes in legislation and legal systems in many parts of the world. Friends, you know this. What we are facing out there is better organized than ever. The opposition is politically engaged, well-funded, well-prepared. They are emboldened by their recent victories, and they want more. It's a really grim outlook. But I feel that recognizing the gravity is an important part of how we can reverse this course. What can we do to nurture the process of democratic change? A significant part of the answer lies in the title of this conference, Rights and Resistance. To quote the former Secretary General of the UN, Kofi Annan, democracy depends on the lively participation of organized civil society in political life. Politics is too important to be left 
only to the politicians. A vibrant and robust democracy is a mosaic, a carefully balanced mix of strong institutions, an independent judiciary, an elected government, and parliamentarians with the interest of its people at core. There is no democracy without a diverse and vibrant civil society, freedom of assembly, and a free press. Norway remains committed to the protection of human rights defenders and pro-democracy activists, both multilaterally in the Human Rights Council and in the UN General Assembly, as well as on the ground. We have recently revisited our guidelines for how the Foreign Service missions can provide concrete support to human rights defenders on the ground. Let me highlight two elements at the very heart of our approach. Firstly, we must provide both moral and material support to human rights defenders at the local level. We have an obligation to support those who risk their lives fighting for values that we take for granted. Norway and other countries must continue to work through their embassies and local partners to support those actors on the ground who stress the universe, uh, universe, uh, universality of human rights, sorry, and who resist attempts to label such rights as Western. Secondly, we must support free and independent media, including at the local level. Free and independent media investigate facts, fights disinformation, and ensure accountability. They are guarantors of exclusive, sorry, inclusive political participation. Civil society actors must have independent channels through which they can disseminate their views. And finally, and let me stress this point, all Norwegian development aid shall be rights-based. Our three main development priorities are mitigating climate change through development projects, strengthening women's rights to decide over their own bodies, and food security and the fight against hunger. All of them are meant to target what I see as critical vulnerabilities that undermine the basis and the possibility for building rights-based democracies. I'm nearing the end, uh, but before I go, let me just invite you to reflect, to reflect on the fact that the UN charter itself never uses the word democracy. Uh, however, the main message of the charter is still crystal clear. Democratic governments respecting fundamental freedoms and human rights are the best guarantees, um, uh, are the best guarantees that we have against violence, conflict and war. Democracy is not a state, it's a process. Democracies take many forms, but they must be nurtured, cared for, and cultivated like a good crop. Together, I hope we can all continue that work. It's really more important than ever before. Thank you. <laughs>